Legend has it that St. Ignatius of Antioch was the child that Jesus embraced when the Christ said, Whoever welcomes such a child as this in my name welcomes me. This tale has more or less been proven to be fiction, but the true story of how St. Ignatius finally made it into God's arms is far more heroic. His leadership in the face of persecution and bravery leading up to his death made him one of the great saints of the apostolic age. Saint Ignatius met his death at the teeth of two lions in the Roman Colosseum. But the real thieves in his life were the people who did damage to the church. Born around the year 50, much of what we know about Ignatius is from letters that he wrote while he was transported to Rome for his execution. These letters are very important documents because in them, he shows us that the Catholic faith that we know now existed in the first century. His writings offer guidance to early Christians on how to handle parish problems that they had. He specifically mentions the importance of the Eucharist, Sunday obligation, and the authority of the bishops. Also, another important point to make is that Ignatius wrote the oldest surviving reference to the people of God as the Catholic Church. It is thought that St. Ignatius was facing his execution for personal actions. Many Christians came out to meet him on his journey, and it has been noted that if these fellow Catholic Christians were under persecution themselves, they wouldn't be doing this so easily. The ruler of Syria, Trajan, was trying to get rid of Christianity by deluding it. He told all Christians to join the pagans and worship their gods. Many did, but Ignatius stood as a powerful witness against something he knew was very sinful. Because of his insubordinate behavior, Ignatius was on the road to his death. Along the way, however, it looked possible that he could escape his terrible fate. Ignatius knew the deeper implications of a bishop escaping martyrdom, so he implored his friends to stand back so that he could offer his life for the good of the church. He knew that if he backed out, his actions would make it appear that he really didn't believe in God. When Ignatius reached the arena, the lions left nothing of his body behind but his bones. These first-class relics reside at St. Clement's Catholic Church in Rome to this day. Ignatius was a hero and a true church father. He saw the people under his watch as his children. After all, Jesus did say, whoever welcomes a child in my name, welcomes me. Ignatius was a bishop, a teacher, and a martyr, but his truest identity was a child of God.